हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर रमाश्रय प्रसाद फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ जियोग्राफी डॉक्टर भीमराव अंबेडकर कॉलेज यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ डेली डेली टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस एटमोसफियरिक हीटिंग एंड कूलिंग विच कम्स अंडर द पेपर क्लाइमेटोलॉजी फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेटस डिस्कस वॉट कुड बी द लर्निंग ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ दिस मॉड्यूल वाइल गोइंग थ्रू दिस मॉड्यूल यू विल बी एबल टू नेम द सोर्स ऑफ हीट फॉर द अर्थ एंड इट्स एटमोसफियर एक्सप्लेन द मैकेनिज्म ऑफ हीटिंग एंड कूलिंग ऑफ द एटमोसफियर एक्सप्लेन द टर्म्स रेडिएशन कंडक्शन कन्वेक्शन एडवेक्शन एट्सेट्रा discuss the mechanism of latent heat and their release elaborate upon the distribution of energy surplus and deficit describe different types of lapse rates and explain various factors affecting the heating and cooling of the atmosphere now coming to the introduction you must have observed while taking tea that it is very hot when poured in the cup to sip can you dare to sip immediately probably not hopefully you would wait for a few minutes to get the heat of the tea lowered what happens when you leave the tea for a few minutes the place where you are sitting to sip the tea is cooler than the tea the tea is not so hot now as it was when it was poured in the cup where the heat escaped as a matter of fact heat released from the cup spreads to your surrounding take another example why do you prefer to drink cold water from your refrigerator during hot weather season suppose you are putting the refrigerated cold water on your table for some time say an hour or so what will happen to the cold water after an hour will it remain at the same low temperature or its temperature will rise if the temperature is rising what is the process of warming its condition will be equal to room temperature in in both the examples the heat temperature heat or temperature of tea and cold water is altered in the first case the heat is lowered while in the second case it is increased all depends on the heating and cooling conditions of the objects and its surrounding the radiant energy coming from the sun is the main cause of heat on the earth the atmosphere is primarily heated by the long wave radiation emitted by the earth surface heating and cooling of the atmosphere are affected by several regional and global factors in this module an attempt has been made to understand the heating and cooling process of atmosphere within which we are living in La, now discuss uh, let us discuss about the source of heat the source of heat on the earth and for earth's atmosphere is little heat reaches to the surface and atmosphere by earth's cooling hot spring and volcanic eruption volcanic eruption is confined to confined to certain belts pockets on the globe primarily these sources are very meager keeping the size of the whole of the earth as well as huge mass of surrounding atmosphere it is the solar energy which is responsible for the distribution of heat energy all over the globe the distribution of this energy is again affected 
by numerous factors. Those factors will be dealt later in this module. Let us talk about the mechanism of heating and cooling. Heating and cooling of the atmosphere is performed by partial absorption of solar radiation by atmosphere condition, terrestrial radiation, convection, advection, latent heat of condensation, expansion and compression of the air. Now, let us discuss about the partial absorption of solar radiation by atmosphere. The solar radiations are coming to the earth surface directly from the sun. It is the form of short wave radiation. There they are so energized that the atmospheric gases are unable to trap them. But the presence of some dust particles and water vapor in the lower level of a troposphere are capable of holding some energy directly coming from the sun. About 20 percent of the total incoming solar energy is trapped by the dust particles and water vapor in the atmosphere. Approximately half of the total absorbed energy is done so within the 2 kilometer of height from the earth's surface. It is this layer where the amount of dust particles, fire suits, smokes and water vapors are available in large quantity. However, the quantity of these particles decreases sharply with increasing height. You must have also observed that when the patches of clouds are there between you and the sun in daytime, you feel cool even when the temperature is very high. It is so because the concentration concentrated water vapor that is cloud acts as an intervening obstruction by holding some part of solar energy between the sun and the earth. In this process, the air is heated where it is containing vapor, dust particle and the suits. But the heating of the air over certain height through these obstructions does not increase the surface temperature in that particular region. Since these areas are receiving relatively less energy on the surface, the surface is cool as otherwise it would have been. Because of more cloud cover in the equatorial regions, relatively less energy is received at the earth surface in these regions. On the other hand, the sky is clear over subtropical belts. Hence, the energy received in the surface area of these belts is quite high. Conduction The literal meaning of the term conduction is passing on something by a medium without any perceptible movement by itself. It is the transfer of something from one part of the to the other without any physical movement. You must have observed while vegetable is cooked in a pan and a metallic spatula is used to turn the vegetables, it gets heated up while its handle is outside the pan. It happens so because the heat received by the pan from the burner and the spatula is touching the pan. The received heat is the pan is transmitted to the spatula which is warmed up and thus it thus it burns our hand if left for a little more time in the pan. Air is a very poor medium of heat conduction. It is a very slow process of transmitting heat in a mass of air. By this method, 
air is heated, but the importance is not that great. Because the air is in the gaseous stage and its particles that is molecules of or atom is not very solidly compacted. A very thin layer which is very close to the earth surface is heated by conduction method. Once the air atom is heated, it becomes lighter and less dense and ultimately moves upward. Therefore, conduction has a very insignificant role in heating the atmosphere. It is almost negligible in comparison to other method. Practically speaking, majority of the meteorologists and climatologists prefer to neglect the conduction method of atmospheric heating. Now, let us talk about terrestrial radiation. The terrestrial radiation is the most important method of atmospheric heating. Out of the total solar electromagnetic radiations reaching at the top layer of the atmosphere, approximately 49 percent reaches to the earth's surface. Out of this, 5 percent is reflected back to the space without hitting the atmosphere. About 20 percent is absorbed by the atmospheric substances including water vapor. Therefore, 45 percent which means 45 percent minus 5 percent is equal to 45 percent thus uh, plus 20 percent which becomes 65 percent is available for heating the atmosphere. All the above mentioned energy is reaching the surface of the earth in the form of short wave electromagnetic radiations from the sun. The heated earth radiates back the same, but in the form of long wave radiation. The atmosphere gains the heat radiated through long wave from the earth surface. Most of the short wave radiations are not being trapped by the atmospheric gases as they are not capable of. Terrestrial radiations are a continuous affair all 24 hours throughout the year. During the day time when the sun is in the sky, the solar short wave incoming energy is greater than the energy lost from the earth's surface that is land and water body taken together. Since there is no incoming solar energy during nights, the daytime received energy is radiated back to the atmosphere. There may be addition or subtraction of the energy on day to day basis depending upon the seasons, but on the annual basis the incoming and outgoing energy is balanced and the and a static temperature of the earth is maintained. Greenhouse gases and water vapor are transparent for incoming radiations, but they are being trapped by outgoing long wave radiations. You must have observed that the cloudy day keeps us cool while cloudy night makes us warm. It does not make any difference whether the whether the taken example are of summer or winter day and night. The reason is that the cloud reduces the incoming radiations and trap the outgoing radiations. It behaves like greenhouse gas. It has very important role to make the earth livable. Otherwise, the absence of the greenhouse effect, the earth average temperature would have gone down to minus 17 degrees Celsius. It is also very true that there is a gradual decrease in temperature with increasing altitude within the troposphere. Greater temperature is recorded at the ground surface as the earth is heated first and then the heating of the atmosphere starts. The addition of heat is distributed 
and finally results into a cooling. The process of cooling at one level is the cause of heating at the another level. It is nothing but the transfer of energy from one to another in the same way. Heating is the process because the energy is gained distributed or gained from where it has more. All the time the energy is transferred from the high level of concentration to lower level of concentration. Convection. The earth's surface is heated from incoming solar energy. The air in the contact with the surface is in gaseous form. Earth's surface heating results in the heating of the air in its contact, but the air becomes less dense by heating. It further results into rising of the warmed that is expanded air molecule upward. Upward moving air molecules in large quantity creates a convection. The moved air by expansion at the lower ground level results into creation of low pressure. Therefore, nearby air from relatively cool air starts moving to fill the gap created by upward lifting of air. The heat is also transferred upward with vertical moving air. This convection may occur at a local level as well as at much larger regional level. The occurrence of Hadley cell, feral cell and polar cell are example of atmospheric convection. Therefore, convection transfers the heat energy received from the sun to the surface and from surface to the atmosphere. Let us talk about advection. The meaning of advection is transfer of something from one place to another, especially in horizontal direction. Atmosphere is a huge body of air and it and has differences in terms of its pressure depending on several affecting factors due to varying pressure at local, regional and global level, atmospheric gases are continuously on move. The monsoonal air current movement is the example of regional advection, while planetary permanent wind system signifies the global advection. All of them are transferring the heat from one areas to another. The transfer of energy is not only done by atmospheric advection, but also by hydrospheric advection. There is movement of water also from the low latitude to high latitude in the form of ocean currents. The ocean currents also redistribute the received energy from the high concentration to low concentration zones. It is also a fact that the ocean currents are also affected by the advective movement of the atmosphere. Once the air is on move, horizontally physical transfer of air associated heat and other related properties of the mass of air are transferred. In this process, the heat of the atmosphere is the result. It is caused by the differences in air pressure and temperature. In fact, these two characteristics of air are primarily factors in the movement of the mass of air. If the net radiation at global level is calculated by the atmosphere, it is established fact that there is positive budget between incoming and outgoing energy between 40 degree north 
and 35 degree south latitudes. It is also apparent that there is negative budget beyond 40 degree north and 35 degree south latitudes. Overall, the total budget of the earth is almost neutral. The positive received radiation is diverted to the higher latitudes area by the advection. Therefore, higher latitude areas are releasing more energy to the space than the received as it is transported from low latitude areas. Contrary to this, the low latitudes areas are releasing less energy than they directly receive from the sun as remaining is transported to the high latitude areas. Let us talk about latent heat. Heat absorbed or released due to change of the state of any matter is known as latent heat. During this process, there is no change of temperature of that matter. In other words, it is the heat that is required to change the matter to a higher state of matter. You may be well aware when water changes from one state to another, for example, water vapor to liquid water and liquid water to solid water that is ice, it absorbs or releases heat. The energy involved in this process is known as latent heat, popularly meant for hidden heat. Water vapor transports the energy from one region to another. When water is heated, vapor is generated and in this process heat is absorbed. The same vapor when condenses releases the absorbed heat during vaporization. Generally, it is measured in calories. One calorie is the aggregate amount heat needed to raise the temperature of 1 gram of water by 1 degree Celsius. Suppose 1 gram of ice is melted, it releases 80 calories of the heat and turns into water. If the same 1 gram of water is vaporized, it requires 540 calories. Therefore, the said calories are known as latent heat. In the same way, when the condensation is taking place, conversion of vapor into 1 gram of water releases 540 calories and it reaches to the atmosphere and hits the and hits it. When 1 gram water turns into ice, 80 calorie is released. When it was consumed while melting, the ice sublimation is the process in which ice turns into vapor. It releases 540 plus 80 is equal to 620 calorie or vapor turns into ice. It releases 540 plus 80 is equal to 620 calories. In both the cases, latent heat is either released or utilized. From the above discussion, it is quite apparent that the latent heat plays a significant role in heating and cooling of the atmosphere. When the heat is utilized in turning the state of matter from lower level of heat to higher level, cooling is evident. But when it is in descending order, that is from higher level of heat to lower level, it releases the latent heat and heating of the surrounding atmosphere is the result. You may even feel cool when the sweat is removed from your skin either by moving fan or the use of air conditioner. 
removal of sweat by the transpiration evaporation is associated with latent heat and hence we feel comfortable when condensation takes place it leads to release of the same latent heat and causes the air to warm up at the level generally upper level of the atmosphere of condensation. The same thing happens with freezing and sublimation. Now, let us talk about the latent heat of condensation. It is the amount of heat energy released to the atmosphere when condensation takes place. A, as mentioned above, when 1 gram vapor is changed into water, 540 calories is released, it is called latent heat of condensation, because it is releasing to the atmosphere due to process of condensation. Now, let us see the latent heat of vaporization. It is the amount of heat energy needed to evaporate uh, water and it is taken from the surroundings. When 1 gram of water turns into vapor, 540 calorie is utilized. This amount of heat is called latent heat of vaporization. Now, let us see about the latent heat of sublimation. It is the amount of heat required to change solid that is ice directly into vapor without turning into liquid water or vice versa. This amount is 620 calories for changing 1 gram of ice into vapor or 1 gram of vapor to ice, latent heat of freezing or melting. It is the amount of heat required to change 1 gram of water into ice or 1 gram of ice into water. This amount is 80 calories per gram of water or ice. Now, let us talk about the expansion and compression of the air. We have already discussed that the air pressure keeps on declining progressively with increase in height. Consequently, the mass of air is lesser with increase in height. The mass is greater downward. It is due to this region any parcel of air if it rises going upward is expanded because the rising air is entering in the zone of less dense air. It results in expansion. Therefore, the expansion is a neutral natural event in this case. Contrary to this process, when any parcel of air descends, it enters into the zone of more dense air. This results into the compression of the descending air. Rising air expands and the intermolecular space is expanded and it causes the cooling in the air as well. It is also known as adiabatic cooling. That means, the cooling is caused by simply expansion of the volume of air. There is no exchange of heat with the rising air and its surrounding. Now, let, let us talk about the lapse rate. Lapse rate is observed change in temperature when the moving upward in the troposphere. It is generally counted as a drop in the temperature with per kilometer accent in the atmosphere. We know that the mountains are colder than plains. If the latitude remains the same, it is due to the lesser effectiveness of the long wave radiation with height. Let us talk about the environmental lapse rate. 
it is a simple drop in temperature we are simply climbing the height and we feel the drop in temperature it is known as environmental lapse rate the average environmental lapse rate is 6.5 degree celsius per kilometer the rate is applicable only in the lower atmosphere that is troposphere it happens due to two reasons fall in the atmospheric pressure and decrease in greenhouse gases that is carbon dioxide gas and water vapor a adiabatic lapse rate in adiabatic lapse rate the parcel of air is lifted and the lifting air is forced to expand expansion leads to drop in temperature in this case air itself is rising whereas in environmental lapse rate the rate in the air was static but someone is going up and feels the declining temperature a diabetic lapse rate is categorized into two dry and wet now let us talk about the dry adiabatic lapse rate when the air is dry or having very less moisture in it and it rises the temperature will fall more sharply since there is less possibility of condensation the decline in the temperature is at higher side and it is about 10 degree celsius per kilometer in this case the air is almost stable and in general rep represents high pressure conditions now let us see about the wet adiabatic lapse rate when the air is moist it is unstable the capacity to hold more moisture in the air is less there is greater possibility of condensation with the rise of air parcel once it is fully saturated and the condensation takes place the latent heat of condensation is released the released heat is utilized to warm the surrounding air therefore decrease in the temperature is lowered on an average the drop in temperature is about 5 degree celsius per kilometer now let us talk about the factors affecting heating and cooling of the atmosphere the earth is a sphere and the atmosphere is encircling around it the distribution of energy on the earth surface and in atmosphere is varying to great degree particularly with respect to latitude the distribution of heat is affected by several factors important among them are latitude altitude and nature of earth surface differential heating and cooling of land and water nature of ocean currents transparency of the sky slope aspects let us talk about the latitude the light energy of the sun reaches to the earth surface to a maximum limit of 180 degree of angle you know it very well that the earth is a sphere the sphere the angle oh, repeat the angle of incidence keep on reducing pole ward from the equator reduction in angle of incident reduces the energy received per unit of area it happens because a beam with vertical or near to vertical will spread to a smaller area while greater inclined rays will spread over a large area therefore energy received by vertical or near to vertical rays will be greater in comparison to the greatly inclined rays sun rays are 
vertical in equatorial region while in polar region it is mostly inclined it, that is why the low latitude areas are warmer and high latitude areas are colder. On the other hand high latitude areas are much colder because of the less effective heating. Now, let us discuss about the altitude and nature of earth surface. You know it very well that in general the mountains are cool and the plains are warm or hot if the latitude is the same. Plain possesses thick layer of atmosphere and the mountain has a, a small thickness of it. Air is greatly compressed on the plains in comparison to the mountains. The atmosphere is normal, normally warmed by the long wave terrestrial radiations. Hence, low altitude areas has more temperature than the high latitude areas. The nature of the rock also affect the atmospheric heating and cooling. The areas possessing bare rocks have more intense heating by the sun's energy. That type of area also radiates back more and more received energy and the result is quick heating of the air layers lying there. On the other hand, the areas possessing more and more vegetative cover, the heating is moderate as some of the energy is released from the earth surface in the form of latent heat with the evaporation, evapotranspiration. Vaporization from any area keeps it cool. That is why the forested or grasslands are cooler than the hot deserts. Its effects are also seen on the air atmosphere of the area. Now, let us discuss about the differential heating and cooling of land and water. The earth surface is covered by land and water bodies. However, the absorption of heat energy to both of these surfaces are markedly different. The land is an opaque at the incoming solar radiation while water translucent. Whatever the heat energy reaches to the land body, it is utilized to hit the thin layer of the land surface while the same amount of energy reaching to the water surface is penetrating to much deeper depth. Apart from that evaporation also reduces the effectiveness of the heat on the water surface as a part of an, uh, as a part of its energy is removed by the latent heat of evaporation. It is that is why we find equalizing climatic conditions on the sea coast while the interior part of the continent reflect harsh climate that is very cold or very hot. Accordingly, the heating and cooling of the air of that region is affected. Now, let us talk about the nature of the ocean current heating and cooling. Low latitude areas are warmer while the high latitude areas are colder. The temperature of the ocean water is also affected by temperature distribution over the globe. Ocean currents are flowing water, ocean currents are flowing under the influence of planetary wind system as well as the regional shape of the sea coast. Since the ocean currents are very important medium of heat transfer through advection from the low latitude to high latitude. 
depending upon the nature and temperature of the ocean water currents are categorized into two warm and cold wherever those currents are reaching they are influencing the areas accordingly that is why the northwestern european coasts are warmer but the northeastern coast of north america is chilled during winter though both of them lie at the same latitude now let us talk about the transparency of the sky apart from the gases several other minute suspended particles and water vapors constitute the atmosphere though the gases are almost uniformly distributed but other substances are varying at local and regional level their availability and quantity is season dependent also these substances are obstructing reflecting and absorbing the solar radiations and affecting the heating and cooling of the atmosphere let us let us take talk about the slope or aspects slope of the any a region or mountain has direct bearing on the heating or cooling of the air the south facing slope in northern hemisphere and north facing slope in the southern hemisphere receive more energy than the counterpart therefore they are warmer and support more rain resulting in dense vegetation cover when it is the reverse case it is the colder less moist and retarded growth of vegetation the example can be had from the himalayas eastern and western slope also have bearing on the heating and cooling of the air along them eastern facing slope receive less energy as the temperature is not that effective therefore it is cool on the eastern slope on the western facing slope more temperature is recorded and hence it is warmer this type of example can be had from the two slopes of rockies and andes now let us conclude this module the major source of heat of the earth as well as on the atmosphere is sun sun's energy reaches directly to the earth by short wave radiations once the earth is heated it releases received energy through long wave radiations this radiation hits the atmosphere as it is capable of catching the energy which is not the case with the short wave radiations the atmospheric heating is possible by different ways important among them are absorptions of incoming solar radiation conduction terrestrial radiation convection advection latent heat transfer and heating and cooling or cooling by expansion and contraction heating and cooling of earth's atmosphere may keep on changing on day to day or season seasonal basis but the annual basis it is neutral it means the total incoming and outgoing radiations are balanced and the entire earth and its atmosphere maintain uniform temperature conditions the heating and cooling of the earth and its atmosphere is controlled by several factors the important among them are the latitudes since the earth is a sphere the angle of incidence of rays differs with the changing latitudes therefore the distribution of energy on the earth is not uniform 
it is more in the low latitudes and less in high latitudes. Depending on the distribution of insulation, the heating and cooling of the atmosphere is affected. Other controlling factors are altitudes, distribution of land and water, ocean currents, transparency of the sky and the slope. All of them are affecting the temperature conditions on the atmosphere. atmosphere. Thank you. Thank you very much.